This is Lesson 17, Session 2, and we are still learning about understanding equivalent fractions to be able to compare fractions. So um, we are on page 371, and we are on number 1 here at the top. It says, use the model at the right. Shade the model to show the unit fraction 1 4. 1 fourth, sorry. I also want to point out this word, unit fraction. A unit fraction is a vocabulary word that you should have learned in third grade, but you will see it um, throughout fourth grade too, and you will see it on the map test. A unit fraction is one part of a whole. So this bar right here represents one whole, okay? Like imagine if you have a whole chocolate bar. This piece right here is one unit or one piece of it. So a unit fraction, the top number is always going to be one, and the bottom number is going to be how many pieces there are in the whole. So in this case, there's one, two, three, four pieces in the whole. And that is how you find a unit fraction. Okay. Well, let's go back over here. Show eight equal parts in the model and write the equivalent fraction. So right here we have four. If I cut it in half this way, that gives me eight pieces. So what's my new fraction? Well, it's two out of eight, so two eighths. How do the number and size of the parts compare in, in the equivalent fraction? Well, since I drew one line, I cut it in half, and half is two, so it's two times bigger. Use the model at the right to show two fifths. So we've got to cut this into fifths, two, three, four, five, and I'm going to shade two of them, okay? Then divide the model into a different number of parts to show an equivalent fraction. Well, let's do the same thing we did up here. So let's cut it in half. Now we have four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, four tenths. How many times as many shaded parts and equal parts are in the equivalent fraction as are in two fifths? Two times because we drew a line down the middle, and so this one piece turned to two pieces. Let's turn to page 372. Okay. Write the missing numbers to find a fraction equivalent to 5 sixths using multiplication. We can see right here, whatever we do to the top, we have to do to the bottom. 5 times 2 is 10. 6 times 2 is... 12. Write the missing numbers to find a fraction equivalent to 4 6 using multiplication. Well, 4 times what equals 8? Well, I know that 4 times 2 equals 8. And whatever you do to the top, you have to do to the bottom. So 6 times 2 is 12. So 4 6 and 8 twelfths are equivalent fractions. What happens if you divide both the numerator and denominator in 4 sixths by 2? So if I take 4 sixths and I divide the top and the bottom by 2, 4 divided by 2 is 2, and 6 divided by 2 is 3. You can also go backwards. 2 times 2 is 4, and 2 times 3 is 6. So I get a fraction of 2 thirds. You when you are doing equivalent fractions, you can multiply or divide to get an equivalent fraction. Most of the time you're going to multiply, but there are some cases where you would divide to get an equivalent fraction. So, um, 4 sixths and 2 thirds are equivalent fractions. Now when you get into older grades, you're going to divide more than multiply. It kind of switches. But for fourth grade, usually you will multiply. Number five, 
To find an equivalent fraction to 6 eighths, Beth divided by 2 to get 4 in the denominator. What should Beth do to find the numerator? Well, if she divided by 2 here, she has to divide by 2 here. So 6 divided by 2, or 2 times what equals 6? That's 3. So 6 eighths is equal to 3 fourths. Okay, our next question down here is how can you use area models and equations to make equivalent fractions? Well, if you draw the same shape and say you have to divide this one up. If this is one half and you cover this, this is also going to be half of it. So you have one half and two fourths, right? Choose any model to find two fractions equivalent to two sixths. So I'm going to do two sixths, then I'm going to do times three and times three. Two times three is six. Six times three is eighteen. And then I'm going to do it with a different number. Let's do one hundred. Two times one hundred is two hundred. Three times one hundred is three hundred. Okay, let's go ahead and go to page three hundred and seventy three. Divide the model to show one half is equal to five tenths. That needed part has to be divided into five shaded parts. So I'm going to do it like this. So one, two, three, four, five. But also this empty part over here has to be shaded into five pieces. One, two, three, four, five. Now we should have five shaded and ten total. One, two, three, four, five shaded. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten total. So whenever you're given something like this, if, it, if you have one shaded, you have to turn it into five shaded. Or if you have two total, you have to turn it into ten total, but you have to make sure that the shaded number matches the original shaded number for the equivalent fraction. Draw a model to show one-sixth. Okay. Then divide the model into twice as many parts to find an equivalent fraction. There's two ways you can do this. You can cut it down the middle, or you can cut each one of these that are already there in half. So then what's the new fraction? It would be 1, 2 over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Multiply the numerator and denominator of 1 sixth by 12, or by 2, I'm sorry. 1 times 2 is 2, 6 times 2 is 12. So you can solve this equivalent fraction by either drawing a model or by multiplying the top and bottom by 2. Why does it make sense that the fraction you wrote in problem 2 and 3 is the same? Because they are both two times as many. Okay, in page 374, write the missing numbers to find two equivalent fractions to four-fifths. Okay, four-fifths. Two on the bottom means there has to be a two on the top. Four times two is eight. Now over here we're multiplying by 20. So four times two is eight, but then we move our zero. And five times 20 is 100. So four fifths is equivalent to eight tenths, and four fifths is equivalent to 81 hundredths. Shade the model below to show one fifth. Then show 10 equal parts and write an equivalent fraction. 
Again, here, we can either divide it in half or we can cut it in half like this. So let's do it this way. So we're going to cut each one in half. Now do we have 10 parts? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yes. How many are shaded now? Two. Shade the model below to show two-thirds. Then show 12 equal parts and write an equivalent fraction. Ooh, 12. Well, 3 times what is 12? 3 times 4. So we have to divide this one piece into 4 pieces. Okay, so let's do like this. Let's do each one like that. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, so our denominator is 12 and our numerator is 8. Last one. Chris said that a fraction equivalent to 9 twelfth is 3 sixth. Is Chris correct? Well, obviously, if this is smaller, they didn't multiply. So let's see if they can divide. What if you divide something and get 3 as your answer, 9 divided by 3, because 3 times 3 is 9. Well, if I take 12 and divide by 3, do I get 6? No, I would get 4. So Chris is not correct. Because whatever you do to the top, you have to do to the bottom. That is it for this lesson. I will see you back for our next one.